Tubeless tyres have several big benefits. Firstly, punctures can self-repair as you ride along. You can run them at lower pressures, meaning more comfort and better grip. The setup can be lighter than that with a conventional inner tube and also offer lower rolling resistance too, meaning that you can travel faster for the same amount of effort. But maintaining a tubeless tyre setup is different from that of a standard clincher tyre in an inner tube. For a start, you've got sealant inside the tyre. So do you need to replace it? How often do you need to replace it? How do you replace it? And how do you know if it needs replacing? Plus, what do you do if you get a big hole in your tubeless tyre and the sealant doesn't seal it? It can happen. Well, in this video, we're gonna aim to answer all those questions and more. Now, whether you've punctured or not, you'll need to maintain your tubeless setup. And you might not even know if you've punctured, if it's sealed really quickly. Now, this is because tubeless sealant can and will go off. But the amount of time it takes for it to go off, well, it's kind of a how long is a piece of string question because it depends on loads of factors. Humidity, temperature, where you've ridden, where you've stored your bike, loads of things. First thing you should do is regularly inspect your tires for signs of punctures. Sometimes you'll get a tubeless puncture and you won't even notice because it will seal so effectively and quickly. But you should be able to see little holes or little cuts in the tire or sometimes little traces of sealant. And also have a look on your frame of your bike because if some sealant's sprayed out, it can often leave some residue, maybe on the fork crown or if it's on your rear wheel, just look on the, the rear brake or around the bottom bracket and seat tube area. I mean, sometimes when you get a puncture with a tubeless tire, sealant goes everywhere. It's kind of like that scene at the end of Alien when Bishop the Cyborg gets brutally attacked by the Queen Alien. Sorry, uh, spoiler alert, that if you've not seen it. Anyway, either way, it's hard to tell how much sealant you've lost from your tire. So a good thing to do is to top it up. To top up your sealant, there are two ways you can go about it. First, you can undo your valve core with a valve key and then inject sealant into the tire system. The other way is to unseat the tire, fully deflate it, unseat it from the bead, and then place in sealant. Now, undoing the valve core is a preferred method because it's usually less messy and less hassle than having to reseat the tire on the rim. Now to remove your valve core, you'll need a valve key. They often look like this little plastic gadget that comes with your tubeless tires when you buy them. If not, they're really easy to get hold of at bike shops and stuff. And also you can find valve cores often hidden on multi-tools that you would take out with you in your saddlebag. Usually they're craftily featured into the chain breaker tool on the multi-tool. But you just simply take it like this and then remove the valve core by turning anti-clockwise. To remove the valve core, I'd recommend that you first deflate your tire and then place the valve at the bottom of the wheel like this and then remove the valve core. Don't have it like this because then sealant can dribble out and go all over the place. Now when you inject your sealant through the valve, you've got a couple of options. You can either use it straight from the sealant bottle, uh, and most sealant bottles now are actually designed in such a way with a head that will make it easier to do this. But if you do it with this method, it's hard to gauge how much is going in, and it can often be a little bit messy. The best way to do it, and how I'd recommend, is with a syringe and a tube. Now this way you can actually measure the exact amount that you're injecting in. Now ideally I'd say you want to use around 60 mil of sealant uh, when you're using road tires. If you're more performance orientated, perhaps you're doing, I don't know, like a hill climb or something, or you're really bothered about weight, then you can get away with 25 mils of sealant. A syringe really does come in handy for this job and it's also useful for other jobs and things you do with tubeless tires, but more on that in a little bit. Now, after you've put your sealant in, simply replace the valve core. Make sure that you do it up tightly, not over tight, you'll strip the threads and stuff, but make sure it's firmly in, because if it's not, what will happen is it will effectively be like you've got a slow puncture on your tire and sort of overnight your tires will completely deflate. 
If you do need to reseat your tyre onto the rim, one of the best tools for the job is to use a special compressor pump such as this one or a charge canister such as this that you can then inflate and then it releases all the air in one big go to just blow the tyre into position. After you inflate your tyre with your new sealant, a good thing to do is to just give it a spin um, as this helps distribute the, uh, the sealant around the whole tyre and just make sure it's all fully sealed as well. If you don't have a removable valve core, you'll need to unseat the tyre, deflate it first, and then pour sealant into the tyre directly. To do this, just use a tyre lever to pop the, the bead of the tyre off the rim. You don't need to go all the way around though, you can get away with just doing a little bit like this and then you don't have to put the pole bead on the whole way around. It's just enough so that you can get your, your sealant in there. As you can see, this method is a bit messier than doing it through the valve core, um, but I'm just injecting some sealant in now. Now, because we've unseated the tire bead from the rim using this method, it's usually much easier to use a compressor or a big compressor bottle like this that you can blow the tire back onto the rim than using a standard pump. But sometimes you can get away with using a standard pump. I'm gonna use a compressor because I've got one. Then just repeat the same thing as you would before. Give it a spin, check it's properly seated and there's no air leaking out. Yep, we're all good. Now over time, your sealant can dry out. Also, if you've replaced your sealant periodically a couple of times, there's probably a fair amount of kind of like congealed sealant, dried up sealant and gunk accumulated in the tire. So it's a good idea to completely remove the tire and clean this. Just bear in mind that when you do remove the tire, it can be quite messy and you can get sealant everywhere. So I'd recommend either doing it in a workshop or outside, just definitely not in your mum's living room on a nice new carpet. It, I, I did, it wasn't me, Mum. Honest. Fortunately, most tubeless tyre sealants are water soluble, which means you can just use some water and a damp cloth or a sponge to remove most of the old sealant and simply run around the rim and on the inside of the tyre. This also gives you an opportunity to inspect a few things. So you can inspect the inside of the tyre for any big cuts or, or things that you might need to pay attention to. And if there's a hole in your rim tape or it's become worn in a place, you might need to replace it as well. While you're doing this, it's also a great opportunity to remove your tubeless valves entirely and then just give them a bit of a service as well. So what can happen is that sealant can actually get blocked up inside the valve and then stop it working effectively. So what I'd suggest you do is take them out and then take the valve cores out and you can give them a good, a good clean from both ends. A pipe cleaner is a really good thing to do that with. Once you've cleaned your tire and your wheel from the old sealant, which I definitely have, this isn't a completely new clean wheel and tire. Um, then the best thing to do is to dry mount it onto the wheel without the sealant in and then use your compressor pump to seat the bead and then inflate the tyre rather than putting in sealant first. You know you're a true road cyclist when you're fit enough that you can ride up all category mountains yet you get out of breath and a sweat on when you're just trying to put a tyre on a rim. <laughs> Jeez, I bet even Chris Froome gets out of breath trying to hit his tires on his rims. <laughs> Weedy arms. So what about big cuts in your tire? This is something we get asked quite a lot here at GCN. What to do if you have a big hole in your tubeless tire and the sealant doesn't seal it? It can often be in the sidewall of the tire or if it does seal it but then once you pump it back up to pressure the clot for sealant just pops out and it deflates again. This can happen uh, sometimes with tubeless tires and also it means that you can't just simply repair it by putting in an inner tube as if the hole is sufficiently big the inner tube will simply hemorrhage out from the inside and then burst itself. 
There are some solutions though. If your tyre is old and fairly worn out, then you might want to just replace it entirely and then that solves the problems. If you want to continue using the tyre and get some more use out of it, then you can plug the hole from the inside. Now to do this, you can either use an old piece of tyre and fix that in place and it acts as like a patch on the inside. You can also buy dedicated products such as tyre boots or you can use a plug. These wind in from the outside and then you tear off, uh, you, tear, well, you twist them off. And then there'll be a little lump, but as you ride, this will wear down. I actually used one of these in Iceland when I got a puncture on the Rift gravel race. What a nice chap, gave me a plug. One quick tip though, if you are inflating your tubeless tyre with sealant in there at the side of the road, be cautious when using CO2 cartridges because CO2 is very cold when it comes out and it can freeze the sealant inside the tyre, stopping it from working. So just be aware of that. Right, I hope you found this video on tubeless tires and sealant fulfilling. And if you have, then please give it a like. And if you've got any questions about tubeless tires and sealant that we haven't answered in this video, then let us know on social media using the hashtag AskGCNTech and we'll endeavor to answer them in the future as it can be quite a nuanced and technical topic, especially for people who aren't used to using it. Right, now I've got to now set up everyone else's tubeless tyres. I don't know how I've been given this job or ended up with it, but yeah, unfortunately I've got my apron, keep me clean.